We have time for a few questions. <coughs> we'll start with the BBC. Damien Grammaticus over there. Yep. Uh, Vice President, um, you've given your assurances uh, today here in Brussels to European leaders uh, that the US is committed to working with Europe. President Trump has said very different things. He said that the EU is a vehicle for Germany, that the UK was smart to get out, and he expected other countries to follow. Who should European leaders listen to, you or President Trump? And can they be certain that what you say, the assurances you give, won't be contradicted in a tweet or a statement at a press conference tomorrow? And Secretary General, who do you listen to? And are you concerned about differences in what you hear? Well, thank you for the question. Let me say it was my great privilege to serve as Vice President for the 45th President of the United States. And the President directed me to go to Munich and to come here to Brussels with a very specific message. To go to Munich, to, to the Munich Security Conference and make it very clear, as I do so again today here at NATO's headquarters, that the United States uh, is expressing strong support uh, for NATO, even as, even as we challenge uh, NATO and challenge our allies uh, to evolve to the new and widening challenges and further meet uh, their responsibilities. Uh, in this uh, ever-changing, ever, uh, ever complicated world of threats. But uh, with regard to the EU, the President also directed me to come here to Brussels. And I had the great privilege of meeting with leaders of the European Union uh, throughout the morning uh, and uh, to express uh, the, the desire of the United States to continue, continue cooperation and partnership with the European Union. Uh, we, uh, we respect the determination of the people of Great Britain uh, as manifested in Brexit. And we respect the judgment of the peoples of Europe uh, in the European Union. And uh, as I said today, through many leaders, we look forward uh, to working uh, across the channel uh, with all parties in the years ahead on behalf of peace and prosperity. I have heard a sec exactly the same firm message uh, from the President of the United States in two phone calls, from the Vice President in meetings today and, and in Munich, and from Secretary Mattis, uh, Tillerson and Kelly. Uh, they have all conveyed the same message, that the United States is uh, firmly committed to the transatlantic partnership and uh, have an unwavering uh, support for the NATO alliance. And I welcome that very much. Uh, both the very clear uh, statements from all the uh, leaders in the new administration, but also the fact that this is not only something uh, we see in words, but we also see it in deeds. For the first time in many years, we see an increase of US military presence in Europe. And we are deploying new battle groups. Uh, the U.S. is deploying a new brigade. And uh, we see uh, on the ground uh, more U.S. presence uh, in Europe. So this is a commitment in words, but also in deeds. When it comes to the European Union, I would like to underline the importance of the enhanced uh, cooperation between NATO and the European Union. We have actually been able to bring that to a new level. Uh, implementing many different issues uh, or measures, and we signed a joint declaration between the President, uh, President Tusk, President uh, Juncker and me uh, in, uh, in, in Warsaw, and we are now following up and implementing that. Uh, we are working closer on hybrid, on cyber, on, uh, on addressing how to build the capacity uh, in our neighborhood and how to stabilize our neighborhood, our areas where we work together with the European Union. And I think actually the NATO-EU cooperation uh, is even more important now because we live in times with uh, turmoil and unpredictability and then we need a strong cooperation between uh, NATO and the European Union and I welcome the very strong US support for uh, that approach. Next question, uh, Ken Thomas with the Associated Press. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. I wanted to ask you about the dismissal of General Flynn uh, recently. Um, did you feel like you were misled or, uh, by members of the Trump administration, or were you frustrated that you were left out of the loop on this situation? And what assurances have you received from President Trump that something like this will not happen again? And uh, for Mr. Secretary General, uh, both you and the Trump administration have talked about the need for additional uh, f funding for defense. 
What are the consequences for inaction uh, by NATO members? Would it, is there any scenario in which the um, uh, in, in which the Article 5 commitments might be considered conditional if NATO members do not uh, fulfill their, their defense spending obligations. Thank you, Ken. Let me say I'm, I'm very grateful for the close working relationship I have with the President of the United States and um, am, um, uh, I, I would tell you that I, I was uh, disappointed to learn that uh, this, the, um, the facts that had been conveyed to me by General Flynn uh, were inaccurate. Um, but uh, we honor General Flynn's long service to the United States of America, and I fully support the President's decision to ask for his resignation. Uh, it was the proper decision. Uh, it was handled properly and in a timely way. And I have great confidence in the national security team of this administration going forward. Uh, the combination of our uh, uh, of, uh, of, of Secretary Mattis, uh, of uh, Director Pompeo at the CIA, of Secretary Kelly at Homeland Security, I think gives the American people great confidence uh, that the team in this administration uh, is providing uh, the leadership uh, and the direction uh, to those agencies and also uh, to the President of the United States to advance the security of our people. Our collective defense uh, clause, uh, our collective defense commitment is uh, unconditional. It's absolute and it's the core of the NATO alliance. And I welcome the very strong commitment of the United States uh, to this transatlantic bond and to this uh, collective defense uh, clause. At the same time, I fully support uh, what has been underlined by President Trump and by President, uh, Vice President uh, Pence today, uh, the importance of burden sharing. And I think we have to remember that this is not only uh, something that the US is asking for, it's actually something that 28 allies agreed. The leaders from 28 NATO allied countries sat around the same table uh, in 2014 and agreed uh, to stop the cuts to gradually increase defense spending and then uh, uh, to meet the 2% uh, target uh, within a decade. And the good news is that uh, we are moving in the right direction. After many years of decline, after many years of uh, defense cuts across Europe and Canada, uh, we saw that in 2015 we stopped the cuts the first year after we made uh, the pledge. And then in 2016 we have a significant increase of 3.8% uh, in real terms, or $10 billion. There is a long way to go, and much remains to be done, but at least uh, we have turned a corner and we have started to move uh, in uh, the right direction. I am encouraged by that, and I expect all allies uh, to make good on the promise they made in 2014 uh, to increase defense spending and to make sure that we have a fairer burden sharing. Next question goes to the Deutsche Zeitung, Daniel Brüssler. Yes, a question uh, to the Vice President and the Secretary General. The German Foreign Minister has called the 2% goal too ambitious and said that more spending would not necessarily lead to more security. Are you disappointed uh, by that? And what would be the consequence if a country like Germany uh, would not uh, hold up to the 2% goal? And a question to the Vice President, if I may. President Trump has repeatedly talked about his war with the press since NATO is an alliance of values, uh, can you assure the allies that uh, the freedom of press is not under threat in the United States? Thank you. All allies have committed uh, to the uh, defense investment pledge, uh, meaning to stop the cuts and to start to increase. And uh, that also includes Germany, and it has also been clearly expressed uh, from Germany that they uh, 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 are committed to uh, the defense investment pledge we made together in 2014. The good thing is that Germany has started to increase defense spending. Uh, in 2017, there will be a significant increase in, the, in German defense spending uh, with uh, uh, around or by uh, around 8%. Uh, so, of course, Germany, as many other allies, have a long way to go. And uh, some allies will meet the 2% target uh, within a year or two. Romania declared uh, last week that they will meet the 2% target this year. Lithuania and Latvia will soon uh, be able to meet the 2% target uh, uh, also within uh, a year or two. 
So we are really making progress. Germany has started to increase defense spending. And again, I expect all allies uh, to keep the pledge they made together uh, as leaders in 2014. Let me say again, I, the President and I and our administration are very grateful for the Secretary General's focus on, on burden sharing and for our NATO allies, uh, whether it be Germany or other countries, to meet the commitment that treaty allies made to one another. Um, I think it's a demonstration of President Trump's leadership that before taking office, he was speaking about um, and the fact that the United States provides more than 70% of the cost of NATO today. And, uh, and we're, we, are, um, we are committed to continue to do our part, but that the time has come for our NATO allies to step forward. And the Secretary General's strong message on this is in all of our collective interest. I will tell you that I had uh, very, uh, very productive discussions with uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, we spoke about uh, just this issue, and uh, we look forward to a continued dialogue. Uh, our hope is that uh, we will have a date very soon where Chancellor Merkel will uh, uh, come to the White House. I expect uh, the President will talk with her about it as well. But uh, it, th this is simply about all of us doing what we all said we would do to provide for our common defense. And in the ever-changing threat environment in which we live, that's more important now than ever. Uh, with regard to your second question, rest assured, uh, both the President and I strongly support a free and independent press. But you can anticipate uh, that the President uh, and uh, all of us will continue to call out the media when they play fast and loose with the facts. And the, the truth is that we have in President Trump someone who has a unique ability to speak directly to the American people. And when the media gets it wrong, I promise you President Trump will take his case straight to the American people to set the record straight. Next question, Julian Barnes with the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Mr. Vice President, um, over here. Uh, you, you said the U.S. commitment to the EU was steadfast and enduring. Is the administration opposed to further disintegration of the EU, further countries exiting? And on NATO, what is the or else? If there isn't more defense spending this year, would you recommend cutting the European Reassurance Initiative? Would you cut back on exercises? What's the or else? Well, I think your second question is, is a very fair one. What is the or else? I think when uh, Secretary Mattis was here, he spoke very plainly here at NATO's headquarters uh, about the frustration of the American people that as our country continues to make investments in Europe's security, we see European countries falling behind. Uh, the president really put this issue front and center before the American people in his campaign for president. And, and frankly, it struck a very resonant chord. And so I, I, I don't know what the answer is to or else, but I know that the patience of the American people uh, will not endure forever. That the, the commitment that we have made to one another, that the American people are keeping with the people of Europe in NATO is a commitment that the President of the United States and the American people expect our, our allies in Europe to keep as well. And, uh, but failing that, uh, uh, questions about uh, uh, the future, we'll just leave in the future uh, as hypotheticals. But I have, to, I have to tell you, with the Secretary General's strong leadership, uh, having made the issue of burden sharing his top priority, uh, having a, a partnership with uh, so many countries across NATO who, in my meetings over this weekend, have expressed a desire uh, to, um, to step forward and, and keep their word. Uh, I'm very encouraged about the progress. But what, what you see happening here is, in a very real sense, um, the result of American leadership. Uh, in President Trump, uh, we have a president who is stepping forward. He's expressing American leadership not just on not just on the issue of funding, uh, but also on his call uh, last year that, that NATO should evolve to widen, uh, widen its uh, tactics to include counterterrorism uh, as, a, as a major focus. And NATO has begun to do that. The United States looks forward uh, to supporting that. Um, w with regard to the European Union, my message, very simply, uh, was that the United States um, is committed to continuing 
uh, our, uh, our partnership uh, with the European Union. And uh, I wanted to make that very clear. Uh, we understand the relationship between our economies. Uh, we understand the, the, the deep heritage uh, of, uh, of member states in the European Union with people in the United States of America. And uh, looking for ways that, that uh, we could reassure this weekend leaders of the European Union of our commitment to ongoing cooperation um, uh, and uh, uh, maintaining uh, that, that partnership in the years ahead uh, is hopefully a resonant message uh, that, that came through. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and it was my great privilege to be here to deliver it. Let me just add that the focus of the alliance is on how can we make sure that we succeed uh, in delivering on what we agreed about fair burden sharing and increased defense spending. And therefore, I will not speculate so much about uh, or else, what will happen if we don't succeed. But we heard a very firm and clear message, message from the United States. We have heard it from the President, we have heard it from the Vice President, uh, and from Secretary Mattis at the Defense Ministerial meeting. So I think that just underlines the importance of uh, uh, making sure that we uh, move, that we succeed uh, in, uh, in increasing defense spending across Europe and, uh, and Canada. And uh, the good thing is that we have started. 3.8% uh, real increase in 2016 is a significant uh, step, but it's only one step in the right direction. We need much more. Let me also add that we need both to spend more, but we also need to spend better. So the focus of the alliance, the focus of the defense ministers, but also in our cooperation with the European Union, is how can we increase efficiency, how can we develop cooperation, how can we make sure that we address the fragmentation of especially European defense industry so we can reduce costs and uh, get more out of the money we invest in our uh, defense. But, the, but, but, but there is no way we can choose between either spend more or better. We need to spend both more and better. So the, the, what we committed in 2014 was not either to spend more or to spend better, but it was to spend 2% of GDP in a better way, and we are addressing both things, and we are moving forward on both tracks. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.